Like I've changed a lot since he's died. For I mean, I think for the better, but I'm a different person and that's okay. But I wonder, you know, like what would my conversation be with him now? Yeah. Because he knew me as Mrs. Bentley. That was a very different world. Right? Yes. I mean... So I was really thinking, you know, God, it'd be interesting to have a conversation. And I, t- and I told him everything I've been up to the last 10 years. Right? When you Is that an like, interesting question? Yes. Because, oh, well, first of all, I'm sure he'd be very proud of you for writing this book, first of all. because Well, I think he'd be very surprised that I wrote a book because the truth of the matter is he was the writer. He and Hannah were the writers and academics. And I was always the doer and the talker. He used to always say, I'm the map maker and you're the executor. And a map is no good without a good executor. So I was like, hooray, I love to execute, right? I was the big talker in the room. I was the one that wizarded up stuff. We were a great team in that way. So I remember saying to Richard one time, you know... I am such a great storyteller. I am probably one of the best cocktail party invitees people will ever have. I'm just interesting. I think I should write a book. He's like, oh, for God's sake, stop it. You can't close your mouth long enough to write a book. You don't have the patience. People that write books are like to be alone, like to be isolated, yeah. don't like to talk to people. He said, don't write a book. So I think more than anything, he'd be, he's gonna be, he would be very surprised that I actually wrote this book what about the fact that you know like you were on tv you're walking down the street people think they know everything about you you made money well, with I, that like I didn't find that fascinating because richard was sort of the big shot in our family you know he was the one that was this one from speed trader and you know and this and dignitaries and all that but and i loved that about him and i loved being the missus to that mister right yeah but I, what would richard Matthew think if he saw me walking down the street and someone yelled out like they do, you made it nice. I mean, how many times? Or clip clap. Do you know, to this day, I still hear that probably 15 times a week. Do you hear that or clip clip more? I hear mostly you made it nice from Cavs or I hear, what are you doing here without Dorinda? From Cavs, wow. Yeah. And then of course, there's always the one uh, the people that lean over to me, you know, while they're walking by, they get up all their courage in the world. And I'll be sitting in a restaurant and, and you know, someone will come. It just happened to me the other night in the shoot. I tell you how I'm doing that, puppet. bitch. It's so great to see you, Dorinda. That's my <laughs> personal favorite. tell favorite. they dumped up all this courage to say that. And I'm like, oh my God, that's great. That's my personal favorite. Like, it is the classic. What about, yeah, I mean... Like, so we, everyone watches and thinks they know you. Like, what do you think is going to shock people, you know, that have watched you on TV for six years the most out of this book? I think that, you know, I think the thing that will maybe not, I don't know if it'll shock them, but the fact that how many different stages and how many different things I've been able to be exposed to and experience and, and really the different stages of Dorinda, you know, Dorinda's in college, Dorinda Lynch, Dorinda the single mom, Dorinda Medley, Dorinda the Widow, you know, they, it's a, those were all very unique people in my life, characters that that I even revisited. And I also think that there'll probably be um, sort of, I think a lot more of my vulnerability I was able to show in the book. You know, and I don't, I don't think I'm always so good at doing that. You know, my reaction is to get stronger and get put up a wall because, you know, God forbid they show weakness. And I think I was, they're going to see that, you know, we all are afraid at some point. We all suffer from fears and anxiety and I'm not good enough. You know what I mean? Like I, one of the things that I asked myself, you know, in the book is what would I tell my younger self? And I address it in the book. You know, I would just say, you know, don't be so afraid. Like you can do this. Don't be afraid. You're, you actually are worthy and good enough. Because when we're young, we just don't feel that way. We may put on a great facade. But it's scary, especially when you're venturing into the unknown a little bit. And I never had a lot of resources growing up. So it's not like if I failed, I had parents that were going to pay my rent for six months and say, you know what I mean? Like I had to do it. If I succeeded, I succeeded. If I failed, I failed. Now, I always had a beautiful home to come back to in Great Barrington, but that's not what I wanted to do. And when I did do it, when I spent all my money that night at the bar, my bonus, 
yeah, I came home, but literally my father sent me a, you know, when I called up and told him, he sent me a finance bus ticket. He said, that's it. And off I went home and worked for a year to, you know, get my act together, as he said. Do you think that's one of the biggest misconceptions about you? You know, like Dorinda Medley, she's tough. Like, you know, she's got it. She's not insecure. Like she doesn't have, like, do you oh, think God, that's- Yes, I think it is. I think I, and I, I think that's people don't realize I'm very able. I learned to really be self-sufficient, but you know, there's times even, you know, the other day I was just so exhausted and I was thinking, I just don't want to do this anymore. Like I, I'm over it. Like, I'm, I, this is not going to work out. I can feel like this book's going to fail. Why did I do that? This was stupid. You know, the, the voices start to get you and they get, they have this conversation and it just gets more rapid and more rapid and more rapid. And then I have to pull myself out of it. I usually take a nap and I'm like, okay, we're done with that. Take a nap, have a glass of wine, or just call Simon and Schuster. And they're like, Dorinda, pull it together. This book is going out to the whole world. Get on the train. It's true. 